Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about the differences between strong acids and strong bases and weak acids and weak bases. So let's jump right in and just take a look at a simulation and see what's going on. And so what we're looking at here is a little simulation, complements of FET simulations from the University of Colorado. I suggest you check it out. Some really cool science and uh, math and physics uh, simulations. And so what we're looking at here is an acid-base solution simulation. And so what we can see here is we can see different substances like water, strong acids, weak acids, strong bases, and weak bases on a microscopic level. And so if we take a look at water, for example, on a microscopic level, we're going to notice this. We're going to notice a chemical reaction that we can't see with the naked eye taking place. What's going to end up happening in any given amount of water is that some of those water molecules are going to act as an acid and some of them are going to act as a base. And so if this water molecule here acts as an acid, it's going to donate an H plus to this water molecule here and produce hydronium over here, the hydronium ion. And when this loses an H plus, it's going to produce the hydroxide ion. So in any given amount of water, there's a certain concentration or specific concentration of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions that are floating around in here. And that concentration of hydronium ions is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter. And the hydroxide ion concentration in here is also 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter. So as a result, we have a, uh, a substance that is neutral. They neutralize each other. And so if we put our pH paper in here and we take a look and compare it to here, we can see that the pH of water is in fact 7. It's right in the middle of our pH scale and that is because we have the same concentration of hydronium ions as we do hydroxide ions. So you might be saying to yourself, well, so you mean to tell me when I'm drinking water, I'm really drinking nothing but hydronium ions and hydroxide ions? No, that's not the case. You are drinking a very small quantity of those two ions because what is also happening here, as we can see by the arrow pointing to the left, is that hydronium here is donating an H plus to OH minus to produce water here. And when this loses an H plus, it produces a water molecule here. And so what ends up happening is that the reverse reaction, the reaction taking place to the left, is favored. That means it happens the majority of the time. So as a result, when we are drinking water, we are actually drinking uh, a vast majority of these molecules and we are also consuming a very small amount of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. So understand that concept. So now let's take a look at the conductivity of, of water. If we take a look we have ourselves a battery that's hooked up to this light here and so to complete the circuit we're going to drop this in some water and see what happens we can see that our light bulb shines very dimly. It's not going to shine very bright. And so water is a very weak electrolyte. And it's a very weak electrolyte because it has a very small concentration of ions, hydronium ions and hydroxide ions that are floating around in here. But now let's take a look and let's compare a strong acid to a weak acid. So let's take a look at a strong acid and what does it mean to be a strong acid. So we have a strong acid here and if we take a look at a strong acid on a microscopic level, here's what's happening. We have our strong acid. This can be like hydrochloric acid. This could be sulfuric acid or perchloric acid. So we have a strong acid and what's going to end up happening when you put a strong acid in this water here is that it's going to dissociate completely. And so what do we mean by that? Well, if we take a look, here's what's going to end up happening. When we put a strong acid in water, what ends up happening is that this acid molecule here is going to donate an H plus to this H2O and produce hydronium ions over here. And it's also going to produce this substance here which is going to be a conjugate base to this acid right here. So let's suppose this were hydrochloric acid, then this, this substance here would be the chloride ion. And so if we take a look here, we'll notice that there's a high concentration of hydronium ions, and there's a high concentration of chloride ions, if we're assuming this is hydrochloric acid here, that is floating around in this solution. And because there's a high concentration of hydronium ions, 
that is what's going to make this a strong acid because this dissociates completely and produces a high concentration of hydronium ions. And if we take this pH paper and we put it in our solution here and compare it to our color key here, we can see that the pH of this solution here is approximately 2, making it a strong acid. So understand that concept that with a strong acid, you're going to have a high concentration of hydronium ions that the forward reaction happens to completion. And that is because the acid here is going to dissociate. It's going to separate in water and the hydrogens here are going to bond with the H2O to produce hydronium. And so let's take a look now at the conductivity of a strong acid. If you take a look here, if we drop these in here, we have a high concentration of ions that are floating around in this water or this solution here. So you guessed it. When we put this in here, this completes the circuit and we end up having a strong electrolyte because there's a high concentration of ions that are floating around in this solution. So strong acids make very good uh, electrolytes. They're good conductors of an electric current. Now let's compare strong acids to weak acids. And so if we take a look at a weak acid, this can be vinegar for example, but if we take a look at a weak acid, we'll notice that the concentration of ions that are floating around in this water right here, A minus NH3O plus, is relatively low when we compare it to strong acid. And that is because when we put a, a weak acid in water, it's not going to dissociate completely. It's not going to dissociate completely because what ends up happening is that the reverse reaction is also taking place. The forward reaction is not happening to completion. So what do we mean by that? Well, if we take a substance like vinegar and we put it, I'm sorry, acetic acid and we put it in water, what's going to end up happening is that the H plus is going to be donated to this H2O and produce hydronium ions. But what's happening at the same time is these hydronium ions are donating an H plus to the acetate ion and producing water over here, right? It's producing water over here as well as our acetic acid over here. So understand that with a weak acid, weak acids aren't dissociating completely and what ends up happening is that the reverse reaction is also taking place producing water and our weak acid. And so as a result, what we're going to have here is a low concentration of ions that are floating around in here. So if we put our pH paper in here, we'll notice that the pH of this solution, if we compare it to our color key, is going to be about five or six, somewhere in that range. So this is going to be a weak acid. And that is because there is a relatively low amount of hydronium ions that are floating around in there. And so if we take a look now at our conductivity of a weak acid. Here we go. We're going to drop this and complete our circuit here. And we'll notice that this light isn't going to shine as brightly as it does with a strong acid because there's not a high concentration of ions in here. So weak acids make weak electrolytes. They're weak conductors of electricity or poor conductors of an electric current, <clears throat> whereas strong acids are going to be strong electrolytes and conduct electric currents very well. So now let's take a look at strong bases versus weak bases. And so in an earlier video, we talked about the strong bases. We said that strong bases are bases that have hydroxide bonded to atoms that come from or metals that come from group one on the periodic table and uh, three different metals that come from group two on the periodic table. And so those are going to be our strong bases, bases where we have hydroxide here bonded to some sort of uh, metal ion that comes from group one or two on our periodic table, with the exception of a couple from group two. And so if we take a look here on a microscopic level uh, at a strong base, here's what's happening. When you put a strong base in water like this right here can be sodium hydroxide, for example, it's going to dissociate completely. It's going to dissociate completely into hydroxide ions and sodium ions, if we're using sodium hydroxide as an example. So in our solution here, we're going to have a very high concentration of hydroxide ions in solution. And you'll notice that the reverse reaction doesn't even take place. That is because with strong bases, 
the forward reaction happens to completion it's dissociating completely in water and so if we take our ph paper and we drop it in this solution right here and we compare it to our color key here we can see that the ph here is around 12 or 13 which is going to make it a strong base we have a strong base here due to the high concentration of hydroxide ions that are in the solution and now if we can take a look at the conductivity of uh, a strong base solution we can see you guessed it that this strong base solution here is going to conduct an electric current very well it is a strong electrolyte so understand that concept let's take a look now at weak bases and so if we take a look at a weak base uh, on, on a microscopic level here's what's happening according to Brunstad Lowry weak bases or bases in general except H plus from other substances and so when we put a weak base in water what's going to end up happening is that this water here is going to donate an H plus to this weak base this weak base is going to accept an H plus and what we're going to end up with is this ion over here and when this loses an H plus we have OH minus floating around in this water right here but what's also happening is that you see the reverse reaction the arrow pointing to the left is also taking place these two guys are reacting with one another to produce water and your weak base and so what ends up happening is that the reverse reaction is also taking place so we're gonna have a very low concentration relative to strong bases of hydroxide ions that are floating around in this solution right here and so if we put our pH paper in here we can see that with a weak base we're gonna have a pH of about somewhere between 9 and 10 if we take a look at our pH color key so understand that concept that weak bases have low concentrations of OH minus ions strong bases have high concentrations of OH minus ions and if we take a look at the conductivity of a weak base solution we can see that a weak base is going to produce uh, or is a weak electrolyte it's not going to conduct electricity or an electric current very well and as a result this this light bulb is not going to glow or shine as brightly as it would with a strong base so understand that concept of water and the hydronium ion concentration equaling the hydroxide ion concentration and understand the differences between strong acids and weak acids where strong acids uh, produce a high concentration of hydronium ions whereas weak acids have a low concentration of hydronium ions and strong and weak bases strong bases have a high concentration of OH minus ions and weak bases have a low concentration of OH minus ions so if you like what you see go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner that's going to subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below and I really hope you guys found this helpful